Oh. Yeah, well, look, welcome back for part two, the uh, 1115 uh, Virgin Airbus to Kansas flew over the top. Uh, guys, uh, the, look, the more I think about trying to get our game back on track, the more I keep thinking. Now, that uh, Richard Calmer, he does that walk for kids, deal all the tracks. He's done it for quite yep. a few years. Uh, we need to get Nathan Snow to organise a walk for Richie. Well, I don't know, what do we do? Canterbury Station to Canterbury? Placards? <laughs> Can't walk that far. <laughs> we'll just all go along, bring Richie back. Like, people, you, know, you might think I'm a big, massive fan of Richie as a player. Yeah, don't really have much we to do were, with him. We were, I, I, we were riding him off until we lost him. Exactly. I, I'm sure he doesn't really like me very much, which is okay too, but... And it's not so much we miss him, we can't put up with what they delivered. So get... Right, please. Come on, Sky. We've got plenty of good ideas about racing. Get Richie back. We need him. Um, Glenn Harvey tweeted last week after the Friday preview show, the mic score, Mark 10 plus. Oh. Glenn 8, Gordo 2. Hashtag not magic. I don't know what, wrong, what went wrong on uh, Friday because I tested the sound. It sounded fine. I think Gordo started off fine, but uh, it all I reckon went... Mark set it up. <laughs> he, he wants him to make himself sound better. Eh? It's funny how they, they get like irritated that like, you do get this show on the internet. Like, even yeah, it, is free, it is free. We are <laughs> filming in a park. <laughs> we are held together with plastic, thing. Um, another tweet was, uh, potential plan B if Gordo t has a bad run with punting. Apparently the sperm, sperm banks are looking out for redheads. There's, not a, there's, uh, there's a bit of a, of a call. Look at that sperm bank. Sperm banks are calling for more specimens from ginger-haired men. Currently only 2% of donors are redheads. That's because no one wants a redhead kid. Well, obviously they're saying there's a demand out there. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Right? No, no, only two percent of donors. Yeah, but the redheads themselves want to kill themselves out as well. Do they? Well, should we let the redheads? No, themselves? you want to, you'd want to breed yourself out of society, wouldn't you? Oh, I'm very proud of my red hair. When somebody said to me once, I was, they go, oh, don't worry, Gordo, your hair's more strawberry blonde. I was well, like, no, I'm a fucking redhead and proud of it, you know? Yeah. And then you've got a great racehorse like Ginger Nuts come along. He's going to... Is he a gelding or not, Ginger Nuts? Uh, he'll keep racing. He'll keep racing. Yeah, yeah. He'll win a call for a cup. Anyway, I think it's a great idea. Um, so are they going to pay me a premium or not? I guess so. I mm. think Prince Harry and Ed Sheeran have contributed to the uh, rise in popularity oh, of... Um, I reckon British maybe um, oh. Game of Thrones as well. Because there's a couple of stars with red hair in Game of Thrones. And there's and a dorky, like there's a dorky actor that looked like Ed Sheeran. It was an Ed Sheeran musical. He was on... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Yeah. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ron yeah. Weasley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His name is Rupert Grint. Yeah. Yeah, and then you've got Fatty Vorden. And what about uh, the guy from Les Mis uh, that played Jack Jones in uh, Pillar of Earth? Pillar yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. been in a few things too. Eddie, yeah. Eddie um, yeah. Redmayne, Redmayne. That's Redmayne. a very funny article, guys. So thanks for sending that in. And uh, How much do you get? I don't know. I'm going. Fucking throw a few loads. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like you, Glenn. Yeah, I mean, you what, what are you going to do? What do you tell me? I'm like, I want the of the races told me he rang up on my behalf to find out the details, yeah. and he asked them, um, do I have do I have to do it myself or? Oh, <laughs> what do you provide? What do you do? How else do you do it? Well, the nurse comes in and helps you out. That's what, this is what he wanted to know. Well, the nurse so, you off. Well, for a redhead, special consideration because they're so desperate, see? Yeah, it's probably, your massive problem is your shoot green cum, but anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Speaking of redheads, hey, hey, Just Ideal, any chance of getting John Walter on for a preview show in the future with you and the boys? Hashtag racing rant on steroids. Oh, because he yaks a lot, does he? He's got plenty to offer, Jay Walter. He's oh, got a lot to say. Does he, eh? Oh, yeah. go to his site. Yeah, he says too. Anyway, but he, no, he's looking for a conversation, mm. a dialogue between us and John. Okay. Um, which, you know, look, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, John lives on the Gold Coast, so um, that's the, the main sticking point. It's, it needs to be well organised to get him on the show. And fortunately, we got him on the show last week. Um, David Diamond uh, said about the show last week, featuring John Walter, it was the first time he'd watched the show twice. So much worthwhile information. Thanks, guys. Mm. Hashtag Logie Award winner. We should go to Logies. Yes. In so, the, new, new media, internet. I don't know. And, and what award are we going to go for? Um, uh, I, I don't know. About <laughs> that. But Crookie said, Monsters of the Game. Hashtag rant. Good show. Can I request a trip down memory lane with the original and the best Dream Team Matt? Dream Team Matt's always welcome to the show. I had a drink with him last night at the Pavilion. 
He sat there with his pregnant girlfriend, and I sat there looking like a 73-year-old man and watched well, we'll every climb on the wall, wall passes. Is there, is there a bit of man love going on there between Cookie well, and... Huh? Yeah, well, three, uh, they worked together at um, Unibet. Um, and Matt did tweet, ran into this, ran into this random guy at Coogee. He was extremely pleased to see me. Hashtag Glenstar. No yeah. doubt we'll see a pic of you celebrities in Sydney Confidential tomorrow, tweeted back Cookie. He didn't say what he did for a living. All he kept repeating was, I just love betting. Mm. I do love betting. You gotta love something in life. Yes. I love betting. Um, Look at that photo, but Matt is just so happy to see you. And I don't no, know. I, what, I like Matt. I was happy I know to see you. you do. Yeah. He's one of the few people but I like. So you've been, you been like sort of grounded down or something like that there. I just look yeah. fucking old. I got like a, a you know, f a year. I'm just old. I'm old. Mm. Yeah, boys. So Luke Dooner was there with Jeremy. They're going to start taking me to the gym every morning at seven. So this morning was the first morning. Well, in theory, to this morning was the first morning. But I had a bad night's sleep after watching that most awesome thing I've ever seen on a, a golf course. The greatest performance I've ever seen by that young man in the British Open, Justin Spieth. Ah, uh, Jordan. Jordan Spieth. Did you watch it last night? Yeah, I was cheering the choke. Did you, did you watch when he had, had to drop the ball? No. You didn't watch the last couple of holes? No, it fell asleep. You've yeah. got no, no idea. You've got no idea. I don't want to talk about it. I'll talk about the show. You've got no idea. I've never seen anything on a golf course like it. The kid is a freak. Mm. Uh, well, poker was mentioned last uh, last Monday. Uh, someone wrote back uh, one thing in regards, actually, was um, Winning Punter wrote back uh, one thing in regards to the racing to poker analogy. Great idea. However, poker didn't have rules stipulating a punter can only win so much. <laughs> what do you make of that? That, um, of course, we've got a situation in racing where... Um, you know, imagine someone letting it ride, but would they actually be allowed to let it ride? Well, so you, 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 you well, I'm, not, I'm not talking about an all up, I'm talking about a, you know, a punter that wants to all chips in. Like the movie. Like the movie, but let it ride. where are you going to find the bookie? You're not going to. Hmm. Well, it depends on whether they've profiled the punter or not. It does. Yeah. It does. Yeah, but so I'm saying, which, which, I'm saying Richard Dreyfus is allowed to let it ride. Uh, yeah, yeah, not going to be employee to take it on though. They'll let him on. They I don't let, think. They'll let, let Richard Dreyfus on, but they won't let any punter that's been profiled. And, and, and like, so, for example, the idea would be, and I'm sure Sean would be interested in like being being a reality show. Like he's he's always pushing he, he is back. a reality show. Yeah. So um, let's get people interested in being Sean, for example. Because you, you imagine a reality TV show about the racetrack, it'd be absolutely fantastic. It's got everything. Yeah. What's left of it? Yeah, it used to have it. everything. Yeah, but I mean, you found it exciting because you just come back. Well, no, he oh. never was. You well, that's what I'm saying, yeah. 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 Like, we, had, we had characters like, like just everywhere, and then mm. political correctness and lifestyle and undercover federal police got rid of everybody. Mm. Blokes turned over drug money on us. I mean, that's no good, but it's kind of funny. Well, so there's a good man that, uh, that's a big fan of the show, came to the Christmas party, and I was talking to him on Saturday about his kids, and uh, basically saying, look, I love the races, and I, you know, I've made sure that I, I, I can be part of the races, but my missus won't have a bar of it. Well, then you should do what everybody should right, do. In so this. let's go to a... Fucking divorce her. Let's go to a very good... <laughs> a very good um, very good letter from Alex Donnelly, who's um, fan of the show. Yeah, good man. Going off to see a July 17 show with Snowy and Ginger Nuts 2.0. Panel was talking about how the wider public doesn't know and the game isn't advertised at all well, and Snowy's point of the greyhound industry thrown in with racing. I had an ex-girlfriend with whom I recently broke up with. When we met, she had no idea about racing at all. Never had an interest in it or anything. Being a lifer and the son of a trainer, I thought this was great because I would be able to show her the real side of racing, despite negative press about treatment of horses and illegal treatments, etc. After our time together, she could only recognise Winx, Michelle Payne, and Swainess, her first and only bet when beaten in the George Main. Mm. Very good race, huh? She would claim that gambling was immoral and that it didn't promote smart financial decisions, and her worry was that I would lose all my money and have no future with her slash potential kids because I like to have a bet from time to time as well as they're saying one time betting is up there with domestic abuse and it was only a matter of time before racing was banned due to greyhounds getting banned as it was cruel. She attended a few race meetings and unfortunately I didn't have good days so she assumed that my losses were each week and that this tied back into her thoughts that I would lose all my money. 
Wait, well, you've done a good job getting rid of this chick. <laughs> of course, never change. She's a fucking idiot. Despite meeting many friends of mine within the industry who make a living from the game, be it jockeys, stable workers, all she could ever see was negative press slash monetary loss. And even when I attempted to explain to her the difference between a mug at the pub versus someone like myself who has one area that I'm racing that I focus on due to my work, people like yourselves who make a living off the game and why people like yourselves are trying to promote smarter habits bets and how many, how, many, how, much, how many dollars the industry creates for the economy, she would never waver. It was one of the main factors of the breakup. Be the army factor. Get rid of her. As if, she, as if she couldn't put up with my jobs and passion for racing, it wasn't right for me. Get rid of her. She was the typical person attending the races of my generation. Because Alex is a bit like younger than us, like mm. Gordo's age. And you were younger even. Even younger. Um, she was the typical person attending the races of my generation, loves to go, dress up, drink champagne, get on the Instagram photo to show off that she was there, and would only pay attention to the races due to me having a bet. The time with her showed me that the people who advertise this game have absolutely no idea how to draw in the general public, and if it wasn't for Winx slash Melbourne Cup Week, we would be completely fucked, as outside of that time, no one gives a stuff slash pays attention, unless they get a free ticket to Tradies Day, Girls Day Out, and then they get pissed by 1 p.m. and do not know what was what has run and won. Why not get some smart younger people on board at race clubs, racing to the Wales RVL, who are young and want to advertise to the broader public, have ideas to change it up and get them interested? The amount of people my age that bet is scarce. The amount that have some sort of idea even lower, and we need to promote that to the next generation if we want to keep attendance up, get people betting. That's my rant. Keep up all the great work. Uh, by the way, they did. Matt Taylor did try that, didn't he? Yeah, they had he opened up that the young professionals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and that was a great idea. Yeah, but yeah. I think it's like it's hard work. It's not not going well, and I don't think it's supported enough by racing New South Wales. I think they thought at first that this is a good idea, and then they get dynamic young people there with ideas of racing, and they, it doesn't work out for them. What, it's great. It's a great email, by the way, Alex. Thanks so much yeah. for that, and I'm so pleased you got rid of it because. She's obviously just an idiot. The, the thing that makes her an idiot is, and it's in your, it, she loves to go to the races and dress up and drink champagne. The, the dress probably costs her 600, the shoes cost 400. Drink champagne, she's like $100 for four champagnes, and you get a, a dirty, filthy, like, she doesn't mind spending that sort of money, but you have $50 on something and she thinks you're a fuckwit because it gets beaten a few times a Yeah, but what about you go to a theme park, you're going to spend 500 a 1,000 bucks, are you? you are, if you take a couple of people and some kids and stuff like that? You can go to the races, have an awesome day, and maybe have a chance of actually making some money if you put some work in. If you've been 15 weeks making money, I know The whole point about this email is there's tons of this girl out there thinking exactly this. That's our problem. You know what? There's all those people thinking that, but whenever you're at a party, what do they want to talk to you about? Yeah, they Just get excited. Him, they get excited because about you're it. you're a carny folk. You're, you're really? like a sideshow guy. Yeah, you're a carny. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> I, don't see I, don't, I don't get the carny vote it's, it's five. Like, it, it's they are interested. Yeah. Yeah. But the reason they're interested, Mark, is that they're, they're in offices. Yeah, yeah, they're shit. They're bored mm. and they can't wait. The alarm time. goes off at 6.30. They're on the train at 7. They're at Mill Street, North Sydney at 10 to 8. Got to get a, a, a coffee before the uh, happy hour ends because it's only $1.50. Yeah. And we're and now I was, Yeah. Like, fuck. Right, but you what, I'm saying, people, is, yeah. what I'm saying is that uh, our man from Maroubra, that who's, who, whose wife thinks that racing stinks and there's no way that he's going to like be allowed to transmit his passion to his kids. Rob? Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's endemic. That's Everyone thinks that. Like, every family is... Like, show me all the dads bringing their kids out to the races and showing them betting. Mm. Or even taking them to the tab. Show me them. Well, they're my But you know, there's one thing that you've got to realise, and all those mothers out there, is it's such a um, a caring industry. That's probably the wrong word. But if you want to, Mark has these angles that make his living. He's happy to give them to you for free. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people out the racetrack there, they're not trying to hide their little angles or anything yeah, like they're, that. They're they want people involved. They're other. generous. No, no. Right? Yeah. So yeah. what? Great email, Alex. I want, to, I want to get a kid, like, are you allowed to, I'll get a kid to work for us at the racetrack. What, what, how old do you have you to leave to get a first job? Yeah, that's a good idea. You need Callum to work at the racetrack. We're, we're, yeah, we're, something like that. We're getting light. We we're really? Warned off. What do you yeah, mean there was a bookmaker? 15-year-old yeah. boy there. 
Yeah, but he's had a kid. I thought he'd been like a 10 year old or something. No, whatever legal age is that you can start casual work, I'll employ a kid. Just to get his coffee and just. Fuck, that sounds great. Yeah. Um, anyway, love the show. Uh, my only must watch for the week. Um, Someone in charge of racetrack maintenance must have had must have a look at the NRL game between the Gold Coast and Kamala last week. This is not I watched it, yeah. And make a note of the water on the ground in the first half. Was that so bad? Bad. The commentators were talking about whether there was, any, there was a chance the ref would pull the game off. There's a chance if someone got knocked out they could have drowned. <laughs> if someone got hit hard in the head and you went face down, you would have drowned. After half time, I couldn't believe how the ground had drained. It went from a heavy 12 to a soft 5 in that short time with no more rain. Surely the person who designed and constructed the drainage on the Titans ground could be employed to rebuild ground with some of these inferior racetracks to keep up the good fight Macca. So you saw that, you witnessed that drainage. It, Macca is not exaggerating at all. It was like the 10 metre lines, it was like you could see the lines and there'd be an 8 metre puddle. And then after the thing it was just all green. And they'd just been running, they'd be stomping through it like probably harder than racehorses because it's just like it's 26 blokes going up and down the field, and then after the game it was still wet, but it was good as gold. They didn't okay, so they, they can somehow build rugby league grounds or ovals, but can we actually build a racetrack? Because Newcastle is looking very worrying. They tell me that Port Macquarie needs resurfacing. It's two years old. Newcastle's been transferred this Thursday to Beaumont. Yeah. Um, and basically every track that we've Rebuilt, we have ruined. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what to say to you guys. Well, the wrong mob has got yeah, all the got contracts, is that right? Turn yeah, point. Anyway, say no more, turn point. Uh, hey guys, just watched the Rant Part 2 uh, this week, that was last week. Uh, why don't you guys do a point of view video? What's that? You know what that is? Point of view video? Uh, do you, you just have one topic. For a day at the races one day, inform more people how you're betting and what you're betting on. Also, you can give people an insight into Betfair. I still don't know how it works. That's a very interesting thing because the Badger had a podcast last week on the business of betting and he did speak about the fact that Betfair have done a particularly poor job at introducing people to the betting of Betfair. Can I just talk to you about Betfair just quickly? Is there a, I, I don't know. Is there a pretend Betfair? Can you go on with pretend money? Oh, you mean like a similar so, but... Uh, oh, okay. So, and, and so let's go back to the poker again. They have those... Yeah. The, 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 can you go? To, yeah. Can you go? I don't even know because I've always known well, how to I know use Betfair. Red Angel did have a do have a. Um, I know, uh, but does Betfair have one? And if they don't, why wouldn't they have one? Yeah, you, you actually need to have a. Simulation. Have five hundred. That's a great idea. Five hundred yeah. in like. Yeah, yeah. Play money. Yeah, play money. Because people don't even want to play and lose five dollars. Well, it doesn't even need to be play money. They can just have their bets, but it's not real money. And if they, if the amounts up there that you can take at that particular price, that goes into their bet history. But it's not actually real money, and the price doesn't yeah, go off. Simulation. You know? Yeah, I understand. Um, that's probably a very important thing. And so I haven't, li I haven't listened to all the Badgers podcast, but straight away that struck me. Wow, we've got this amazing thing called Betfair, and there is considerable resistance to it because there's tons of people who don't know how to use it. They don't have a clue. And, and the stewards don't have a clue. No, they don't. They, don't. they haven't got a clue. Basically, New South Wales got no clue much about Betfair. The stewards have not got a clue. I'll give you a perfect example. I, I got one of my very best uh, friends in high school and all of our best friends is Bob Grimberg. He's the nicest yep. bloke, most upfront, decent. All he ever do is help you. Mm. All he do is help you. Bob, I, I'm, I'll help you. He has Clipper on Saturday. He's got oh, a good yeah. share in Clipper. Yeah. He's got a good share in Clipper. He has a game for a considerable amount of money, prize money, and he wants it to win. I, he watched the preview show. I said, I, I can't possibly mark it any closer than seven to one. It's two to one. Yep. I saw him on Saturday. He said, the course is going well. We were, our fingers crossed to win. A bit like you, Glenn. I, I, don't, I don't think it's good enough. But I hope it does win. He's not allowed to go and bet fair and lay it because he's in the ownership. It might be worth ten or 20000 to buy He's not allowed to get 2000 out of it. But there's six runners in the race, he's allowed to back the other five runners. Runners, Yeah, That's exactly the same thing. It's exactly the same thing racing New South Wales stewards. This is why we keep trying to teach you guys, because you need help. How is he allowed to back five runners and not his? I'm not saying he did or he didn't. I'm just saying, as an example, he's allowed to. But if he laid his horse straight into a stewards inquiry, check the sheets, Mr. Greenberg, you got 2,000 out of this. Well, I had a game for 20. I, I, I want to get two out of it because... Pay some kids' school fees. Uh, six months and 
$10,000 fine because they don't understand the nature of wagering. Imagine the coppers not understanding the nature of wagering. In the modern world, because things change all the time, all the time, all the time. Betfair in Australia is coming up for 15 year anniversary. 15 years. It's staying. Yeah, I know it's staying, but it's, I'm just saying, something that's been around for so long, and yet has so little understanding. What, why in, like, we're, we're a gambling crazy nation, okay? And right, this is- we're not allowed to acknowledge that. Okay, and we're, we've got a Betfair product which is cutting edge and absolutely sensational. It's gone it, up leaps and bounds in England. It's absolutely flying in England. Yeah, and they've got competitors there too, Matchbook right. and uh, Yeah, so others. why isn't it bigger in Australia? I, th I think it's a lot sense. to do with political. I think, uh, like the American, uh, people feel that when you gamble on the internet, click of a button, you're not understanding what you're doing. You're just getting yourself into trouble. They I think, think they think yeah. that. Like if you go to go to the ten dollars and fill out a tab, race five, number six, ten dollars and number one, put it in, that's okay. Click ten dollars and something, oh you've got you've lost control. But yeah. that's pay wave. You know, we live in a pay wave society. We do live in a pay wave. Who gets a pay packet? Well I've never had one, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well seems like maybe we should crowdfund uh, G Pollock to get his first pay packet. Yes. Um, good idea, Mark. Finally a good idea after all these years. Yeah. Thanks Oscar for that uh, for that suggestion about Betfair. Um, uh, Michael Walker, Walter, Walker, Michael Walter, uh, Walker, sorry, uh, great rave guys, brilliant to have a betting championships to coincide with the championships in April New South Wales. What a great idea. Like a, a betting, a proper betting tournament to match the championships. Well, over the four days or something? Yeah. But you buy in for like 500 bucks or 200 bucks or a thousand bucks? I suppose you could do it like a $250 tournament and a $2,000 tournament and run two tournaments. Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, you've got the championships, which unfortunately, Preston New South Wales only want to promote the fact that horses are involved and they're not very focused on the betting side of it, which is obviously going to pay for these freaking horses. Well, how do you put the bets on? What New South Wales tab? Um, well, I, I don't know. How do you run a poker tournament? How do you run any tournament? Oh, it's easy to do. It'd be yeah, funny if you owned the favourite. Be funny if you owned the favourite in the ten million dollar race and you were leading in the punting tournament and you wanted to lay it. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth eight two million. Can you give me a million? <laughs> oh fuck! Uh, Peter <laughs> Bradley, he wrote in and I have. I'm sorry, I haven't got an answer for you yet, Peter. I have asked Carl from Dynamic Odds to supply the list of NOP bookmakers. So well, it was interesting to me. Send a bit. What does NOP mean, mate? New South Wales official price. Okay. It's the, it's the new fluctuation. Okay, the flight, I didn't know. So, Centibet disappeared off Dynamic Odds two weeks ago. And I read the tweet because uh, Dynamic Odds wanted Centibet to pay. Yep. So, um, Centibet disappeared. I thought, oh, well, Dynamic Odds are collecting the prices now. So, does that mean that Centibet's not included? But I am assured by Dynamic Odds that that's a different thing entirely, that they've got a feed from everyone, whether okay. they pay or don't pay. So, what I have asked Dynamic Odds for, and um, the betting steward will also know, uh, Big Lad MP, is which bookies are counted for the end. Yeah, I really want to know. Mm. We all want to know. So that information is coming. Mm. Have you noticed how poor the NOP is? Then? It seems much worse than the original fluctuation that it replaced. It's just terrible. Well, that's Why just, is it so bad? Well, they're taking six, aren't they? They, they need six bookies to be the price. What about when thirteen dollars and eleven dollars and nine fifty, and nine fifty is the flight, and you're on course and four, four, five bookies are twelve dollars. This has got nothing. I, I, I find a waste of time even looking at it. Yeah, so I'm looking at a favourite there uh, on Saturday. What was I looking at? Sun Craze. Um, you know, it's two sixty in the ring. The, the NOP is like two thirty. What the fuck is and that? I'm, I'm looking at the. I'm looking at dynamic odds. Going. Why are all these bookies so short? It's like, it's like when they didn't provide the fluctuation, they were aggressive, and now they're providing the fluctuation, they're doing what the bookies yes, in the yes, ring did before, yes, which yeah. is like, sit on the price. Right. Mm. I wonder how much of their money is on top flight or... Yeah, be interesting. Think, yeah. Anyway, the NOP does, does seem to be um, a disappointing service at this point. Um, I'll move then on to Centibet, which actually wrote in. Uh, we had Tim Hickman on earlier in the year, and then we had some explanation of why we couldn't bet twice on Centibet. Um, 
and I'll start. do some music in the background. Du, 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 du. Yeah. Uh, so Johnny Aitken from Cenobet wrote in saying he wanted to explain why Cenobet has withdrawn from dynamic odds. We've been asked to pay a sizable monthly fee to have our own odds displayed on dynamic odds. Can I just stop you there? So dynamic odds wants people who have the prices to pay for them to advertise the price, and then for the people to look at the price, they want them to pay. Yeah, they've it got does, a good model there. It's not a bad model for a calculator on a, an internet screen yeah, with so, no expenses. So, so let's compare that with RaceNet, who wants the clubs to pay so that they put their form up. Yeah. But it will be free to the re, the, the to the um to the the the, the, the public. RaceNet is just I've wrapped it since the day we left. It's a great site, and that that free form guide is beyond fantastic, and we all use it. Right, so, okay, well, maybe we should petition Dynamic Odds, you know, I pay Dynamic Odds $50 a month, because I get the expert, because I want to get the feed from the takes. Dynamic Odds should be paying you $50 a month for looking at it to get the money off Cinebit. Yeah. It's all around the wrong way. All we right, can't so, go win-win. So let us petition Dynamic Odds to get the odds providers that we want on Dynamic Odds, because we're paying you Dynamic Odds, we're paying you, so you should be paying our team. Oh, and to be honest, the one you want the most is Cenobet. Exactly. So, I want Cenobet. So, is this I, just I, a, I want, okay. So, is this just a little stink between Cenobet? This will change, won't yeah, it? I reckon. I reckon. No, it won't change. Because it's, it's, uh, it's Wyndham Hill, it's Waterhouse, it's, you know, like we're back in the stand. Yeah, I know, but the, the, the model is to get turnover. But aren't you paying for dynamic odds to see Cenobet's prices? Yes. This reminds me of Foxtel. Mm. When you saw Foxtel, oh, look at this, 187 channels, 119 a month. No you, ads. You pay 119 a month, you get 5,000 ads, <laughs> and then two months later, you go, oh, your 15 channels have disappeared. What? Yeah. yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Oh, we've we've got, another, the wrong way. we've got another cartoon channel for you. Mm. Or David Attenborough Live <laughs> on Ecstasy. Like, for fuck's sake. Oh. It's, just, it just, it's just like the whole of business has become, who else can we get? Everything's just a... Well, they're just trying to nab you everywhere. I mean, the disgraceful situation was the Premier League soccer, where you had to go with Optus. You couldn't even opt in to buy the channels through Fox. But Fox wouldn't have been allowed to, I imagine. Yeah, because right? they made an exclusive deal with Optus. All right, so the Premier League's made that deal with Optus. Mm -hmm. So Premier League distri dis distributing in Australia have gone... Well, Optus has Optus is pitched up. Yes, here. but it's forcing people. It's 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 a it's a lack of competition situation. They shouldn't have been allowed to make the deal because it's forcing people so to. You're saying the A Triple C should be involved there. So, yeah. Well, it's it's not in the park, park, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Monday morning in the park. Um, uh, Jason Hyro, sorry, I haven't read the rest of that. Uh, uh, Jason Hyro is Adam's brother, did you know? Um, yeah, he's a good man. Good man. He said, just in regards to Friday's show. Uh, wanted your opinion on Wednesday horses v Saturday horses. Remember when I said to you, Blair King, Wednesday horse? Yep, he did say that. Unfortunately, I didn't take my own advice. Or maybe the farrier did. Anyway, um, Glenn, maybe you could, uh, maybe you could uh, explain Wednesday v Saturday and along the same line, comparing Saturday Warwick Farm and Canterbury to Ramwick and Rose Hill. Well, Wednesday horses are just when you do the form on a race, and the horses going through its classes, and you're looking at the form, it says Wednesday, 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 and then it goes to Saturday. Just the alarm bell should go off. And it should be, doesn't mean the horse can't win, but it should be conducive to price. You know, you've got to, you know, or, for example, you see Saturday, 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 fail, 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 it goes back to a Wednesday, alarm bell goes off, ooh. Just up and down in class, really. It's not that hard to work out, Jase, you should know the answer to that one. Uh, lastly, was Rose Hill ever considered for the Everest? Is it not a worry that we have a $10 million race on the world stage on a heavy turn, but rains two weeks before the race? It is just the best that we should all finally. Pray for rain. I'll be on my knees. I just can't wait. Can please, dear God. I know I haven't prayed in 20 years, and I know I've been a very bad sinner. But please let it piss down. Historically, October the 14th is probably likely to be the driest day of the year. Okay, so this week for us. So and and, and, the, and the time around that. No, I'm just saying that that uh, okay. weather man is. September and October are traditionally very dry months in Sydney, so they mm. have, they're have they lucky there. Okay, they've positioned it well then. Maybe they maybe they went into their thought plan. It wouldn't have. They, no. they were just trying to fuck Melbourne. I've got to say the Everest has been a lot bigger success than I thought. Um, hi fellas, I just wanted to send an email through to have a bit of a rant about one, one of my pet hates I've seen recently. I, watching Sky, I've seen a number of comments today as mid-race say, the one to catch is the leader. That's very funny. Mm. I know it's not a big deal, but this bloody annoys me. If you listen to the radio, this provides no insight into what is happening and just seems lazy to me from the commentary teams. Um, I understand you what you're saying there, uh, Callum. 
Secondly, just wanted to ask Glenn's opinion on mounting yard mail. Do you find it easier to gain an edge from the mounting yard in the high class Saturday meetings or midweek at the provincials or even country meetings? And is it much of a difference? It's a massive difference, Callum. It's like a massive difference. Like you can be at the mounting yard and you can price something tens and it be tens and you're disappointed from the mounting yard. And the best in your mind you can push it out to is seventeen dollars. You can price a horse in the bush tens and it is tens and you wouldn't take a thousand or one. It's a big, big difference. Like uh, lower grade animals, lower grade trainers, uh, lower grade standards. Horse might be first up no trial. It's come from the paddock. You know, other horses might be first up no trial, but they've had two jump outs and they've been in training for four weeks. It's, the bush is a massive, massive distance as far as edge. Obviously, that's why I still go to so many bush meetings even at my stupid age. So it, it is a massive difference. Like for example, Drakeri's I rubber stamp five to two on Saturday. Saw on the parade ring. I didn't want to be on it. But it was still enticing to take six dollars fifty about it, and it got beaten a bee's dick. Was it a good bit of six fifty? It probably was. Sure was. Does that uh, explain well yeah, enough? Yeah, yep. that's good. Uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron Wilcox on. Uh, Aaron Maisie? No, Aaron Wilcox. I see on the preview show about Gordo with surfing bets. Hopefully, he can get on to win a decent result. Decent result. It's one of the best sports to bet on with confidence because uh, those framing the markets make so many errors. Uh, but it's hard to get a bet on, and he should have sent us a screenshot of. Uh, asking for fifty thousand on a dollar sixty-five chance, and they said uh, uh, exceeds limit. Suggest five hundred and two dollars. Yeah, so it's very it's very hard to get on. You've got to. We've talked about it on the show. All little ways you can get more money on horses. I've In told you all about. Yeah, you just got to be tricky. Uh, I don't. Put this into that. We've talked about it before. You know, other people's maybe maybe you just suggest the bet to somebody else, and and maybe they can do that, and then they do all the different angles between other sports saying, and racing. By saying you suggest it, that means you don't use a bowler. <laughs> Is that the way you say it? That way for? Well, I, I just I just I don't want to get into trouble or anything like that. Like, like yeah, like, hey, all, hey, all the hey, techniques hey, you have. Get in trouble. Oh well, I don't know. I'm get, I'm getting worried that something might happen and mean that I, I can't know, actually get on now. Mm. Okay, well, yeah, well, you get on every way you possibly can under all different names. There are only smaller bets, but you disguise it by having doubles, trebles, quads. You run it into different sports. You make sure that when you open these accounts up that you're having um, uh, lots of bets so that the account is very active, which will disguise it to the corporates, and you'll be able to get on for longer when you start using it properly. Um, there's, just think of all little angles like that That's and, and use, them, use them how you like. It's just bloody annoying to me having different accounts, having to get you an 8,000 account, you got to get 8,000 off your mate. What do you, what do you give no, you? No, you no, no, and, and you don't start off with a big deposit amount either because that sends a flag as well. How many yeah, flags? Are all those flags invented by Tom Waterhouse? Probably. Oh, the English side of the booking? The other thing I didn't realise was that, uh, and it wasn't until Snowy came on, and he said, oh, they're, they're all scraping. So that's why you see them all go off at the same time. It's not that they're actually being backed with all these joints at the same time. Mm. There's, it's a bit like the ring used to be when you had groundsmen screaming that prices were going off. And so the bookies would turn off, pick up, you know, turn off, turn off, mm. turn off, miss the, you know, and then he's back there at the end trying to lay the favourite, which he's missed. Apparently all the corporates scrape each other's prices, so they're turning them off in the same way. Uh, yeah, I've, I've seen that happening. Obviously, we have particularly lately in the less liquid meetings. Um, you need you need to have uh, multiple screens up with um, submit bet ready to go. Ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, David Diamond, who's a good man, he says, "Hi guys, coming at you all on a great height from the satellite. I'm in LA at the moment. We'll be here for three weeks. Business and pleasure. I'm quite heavily into betting on America." Yeah, I saw him at Tuesday and Gossett. Yeah, so he's, he's, he's subsequently left. And I'm over here to learn and hope to get a bigger edge on baseball. Watch your previous show and we'll be watching all your red shows on Monday whilst I'm away. Met a few locals who I introduced to your show as well. I explained the Glenn issue, read the, the cop, by letting him off due to his previous bad luck. They were all impressed by the show and thought there'd be no way it would be allowed in the USA. Why not? Yeah, very heavily into censorship here. But well, isn't the freedom of speech there too? We'll be in our, well, maybe not in relation to gambling. Uh, da, da, da. What's this thing? Hmm. Uh, we'll be in LA for a few Can't days, then off to Vegas mm. to do some work, hopefully pay for my holiday whilst I'm here. Actually missing the races already, but I'll be watching the replays whilst I'm here. Good punning you all, David. Good on you, Dave. I saw you choose that Gosford. I think I spoke to you then. You never mentioned, uh, if I'm going to bloody Vegas, I'm telling everybody about six months out every day. Five months to go to Vegas. 
Hey, the world's so small now, you just jump on a plane. It's a plane, yeah, it's exactly. Amazing, isn't I got a friend's girlfriend, she had dinner with some friends in New York. They were having a big dinner in New York and she knew about it six months in advance and booked a ticket for like twelve ninety nine return and left Friday morning, had dinner and came back to Tuesday. Exactly. Yeah. To go to dinner in New York. Mm. As you do. As you do. As you do. Ryan Osborne tweeted, uh, Blake riding like a chink. That's your word, isn't it? Chink, I never use the word chink. Yeah, a horse has a chink. Ah, oh, Blake's got a chink. Yes. My grandma shows more vigour. He has seven meetings. Did he get suspended, did he? Yeah. He has seven mm. meetings to have a good hard look at himself. Hashtag Dracarix. And yeah, finally... Got to, I, got to, I, I might even ring Blake. He's got to change his style. He's gone mad. Yeah, well, tell me about it. A lot of people have been mentioning it to me. But just too cute. Yeah, thinking I'll say something. Mm. As Ty England gets up outside him and bangs past, past him, him and yeah. not half the rider he is, and mm. just killing him with vigour. And um, he's in a good spot at the moment. Ty is nice and fit. And I think the beard's working for him. I hope I'm allowed to say that about him. I don't want to get him offset, saying he's a nice fellow. Um, finally, the, the, the Punters Collective, which uh, do a great service on Brisbane racing, um, we have sent people to the Punters Collective who provide a manning yard mail service and a rating service. So if any of you out there have joined the Punters Collective, give us some feedback on, on, uh, on what you're getting. Obviously, um, uh, it's run by some good guys, um, Punters Collective, and uh, powered, powered by ratings to win. Um, and if you've got any queries for ratings to win, please let us know as well because uh, Paul Dale is always very happy to help and he's very happy to help anybody who's got any interest in ratings to win, which I must say is one of the most fabulous things I've ever come across. And every pro who's got it says the same thing. Yeah. It's like your electric blanket, all of you, and you're doing it wrapped up in one. Yep, it's all good. Wow. All right, and don't forget we're going to be at Lismore Cup on the 21st of September. So, uh, expressions of interest to, to, to join us. Hey, for come on. Cup. You have to get yourself there, but we're going out that night. Well, we'll have a drink with us, or you, know, yeah. like, you know, we can organise to stay in the same joint or whatever. Um, Can't say a plane. <laughs> What's your plane we've got? With Rexy, I know. Rexy, I thought. I thought. I thought, I thought a we might have some competition in the cow car the night before. Now, Glenn, you and I were going to take it out, weren't we? We'll kill we'll it. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy Sylvester's won the last two uh, uh, Lismore Cups. Mm. Is Robert Thompson going to be right there? Yeah, he'll be, hey, be good man. Decent human being. All right, well, that's the end of the round this week. It's been a pretty long show this week, so um, appreciate all your emails. Boys, another great week of racing ahead of us. Got uh, Wyong tomorrow. Followed by Canterbury, followed by Newcastle Thursday, which will probably be a bit disappointing. And then Saturday, we're back to Rosie Hill. Yep. We'll do a preview here on Friday. Looking forward to seeing you boys at 10 o'clock. Try to have a look at this fucking broad walking down here oh, now. Are you solid. kidding me? Yeah. You got no idea, guys. Sensational. Well, you're not, not interested in the 55-year-old blokes who've got grey hair and no money. Well, fair enough, you've missed out. <laughs> we'll see you on Friday. See ya.